Hello and welcome to Minter Dialogue, episode number 414. My name is Minter Dial and I'm your host for this podcast. First, a great shout out and thanks for putting up a five-star review of the show to Patrick Jinx on Podchaser. So this week's interview is with Alexandra Ontra, who's co-founder and president of Shuffler, helping B2B sales and training teams who need a fast, simple way to create, give, and share presentations, all the while ensuring brand and message compliance. She's also co-author of Presentation Management, the new strategy for enterprise content. In this conversation with Alexandra, we look at the problems that companies face with creating the most effective presentations, how to avoid wasted time and resources in driving your sales and marketing efforts. And we take a look at the typical problems that Shuffler solves. You'll find all the show notes on minterdial.com. Please consider to drop in your rating and review. And don't forget to subscribe to catch all the future episodes. Now for the show. Alexandra Ontra, great to have you on the show. You're an author, you're an entrepreneur, and um, you have a bunch of things you are, are trying to revolutionize. That's the way I, I kind of sum you up, whether it's presentations, making marketing and sales get along, uh, mm-hmm. or bringing in the, the world's most important skill for sales. So in your own words, how would you like to describe yourself, Alexandra? I would hate to describe myself. That's always the hardest question, but I would start with, I am a, I am an entrepreneur. I am a marketing sales person. And I am, I, I would say a, an operations person. I, I do, I do the day to day. I work with clients um, to help them make better presentations. Uh, the book is all about, you know, presentation management and making presentations and everything I've done for the past 20 plus years, I prefer not to count, is related to how companies can make better presentations. So if it's presentation related, whether it's a sale, um, a client meeting, an onboarding, fundraising, writing a book, writing a blog, then that is the ultimate goal is to help companies make presentations better. So I have done a few presentations in my life mm-hmm. and and certainly there have been trends, things uh, which probably rocketed to the fore with the arrival of Keynote and PowerPoint. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it seems to me that the, of course, let's try to remove ourselves from the pandemic per se, mm-hmm. but in, in general, there's been a big shift in the way people view presentations. Of course, you probably still have lawyers Mm -hmm. and consultants doing the old fashioned huge decks with millions of Mm -hmm. words, but Mm -hmm. give us an idea of how presentations have evolved and, and what, what are some of the kinds, kinds of things that people who want to be good at presenting should be thinking about? Okay. Well, the first thing, and it, it has to do with presentations, but it, it has to do first and foremost with, how we consume media. And, and that is everybody has a shorter attention span. We watch one minute videos. We, we consume 40 minute, or I'm sorry, 40 character tweets about you know, immigration policy or a big topic. So people want concise, straight to the point, short, brief. And, and that transcends into business as well. So when you made a point about, you know, lawyers doing big fat, you know, hundred slide decks, that's great, but your audience is only going to tune in, even if they're being polite and they're sitting there for the whole hundred slides, they're only going to absorb, I don't know, two, three, you know, the, the attention span is smaller. So, you know, what we try to do at Shuffler is adjust the technology to how people, how people present and how people digest information. And today, more and more, it is, it is in an interactive format. It's not, um, here's my outline, here's my slide deck, here's my nice chapter, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four structure. And although 
that's great and it's logical and it makes sense and it flows nicely, people's minds, you know, they scatter, they go from one to the other. So think of, you know, before the pandemic, the last time you were maybe at a bar having a drink with a friend and, you know, you go to your friend you and your friends, maybe they just got back from vacation. You're like, hey, you know, how was that trip to the Bahamas? And he says, oh, it's great. And he pulls up his phone and he starts showing you pictures of the sunset, of the blue water, of the sugary sandy beach, of the, the drink with the coconut, all of those great things. And, and there you are following, he's presenting to you. He's presenting to you his vacation. And then, and then the subject changes and you're like, oh man, I have this job interview next week and it's with John Smith at Acme Company. And then he turns around and he Google searches John Smith at Acne Company and he pulls up the LinkedIn page and you both read the guy's LinkedIn page and, and maybe you look at images and you see him at some you know society event or work function or seminar or speech. And again, you've completely traded change topics, but you have presentation content following you. The presentation is following your conversation and everybody's doing it on their phone without thinking twice. And, and now what's starting to happen is people are gonna do that in business. We're on a Zoom, we're meeting, we're meet, uh, excuse me, we're, we are meeting remote more and more. And, and we have our, our library of files, our, 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 our contracts, our presentations, our infographics, our videos, they're all accessible on our laptop. So, you know, we could, pull this document up or that presentation up or this contract format up or, or whatever it is. And you can, you can apply that to business. And what that means is people aren't just passively listening to a conversation and somebody is, you know, giving it in, in monotone, you know, pontificating, but people now are having more and more conversations. It's more it's more of, of a back and forth. And, and especially because we are all online doing this still, it becomes even more important because you don't, you don't get the body language when you're sitting in, in a meeting and you could see that somebody is, is following along or you could see, oh no, they're confused. You, you don't get that in Zoom or, or you know, on a shared meeting. So it's even more important to have these meetings and have everybody participate and make them more interactive. So going into the, the uh, Shuffler, the project mm -hmm. uh, that you, the startup that you and your brothers, I understand it, mm -hmm. pulled together, Shuffler with two R's at the end. Um, <laughs> yes. Describe to us the, the way you articulate the problem that you're solving with Shuffler. Um, there are, I would say there are three core tenants and that has that has transcended different industries over time and different technologies and it's usually a business to business situation with a business to business sales team or a training team and that is it comes from marketing number 1 marketing doesn't know what the sales people are presenting they have no idea what they're saying they might put together a presentation and then they have 100, 500, 1,000 people all over the world. Who knows what they say? Who knows what Alex said on the Minter dial today? Like, who knows? So that's one. Two, people just need an easy way to put a presentation together. There are PowerPoint experts. There are people who are naturally good at it. But salespeople are good at sales. They're good at their product. They're good at talking to you and engaging and working with customers. That's not to say that, you know, they're good at making smart art. You know, they, they don't want to be PowerPoint jockeys. They want to do sales. Um, so they don't want to spend eight hours per meeting preparing a presentation. Let's get them out on the street instead of away from their desk. That's where salespeople are most effective. And ultimately, um, it's consistent message. How do you control the message? How do you know that everybody has the latest logo or the latest pricing or the new product information 
Or if you are in banking and pharmaceuticals, are they using the right disclosure information? So it's it's controlling the message from the corporate from the corporate side, but and giving the salesperson in the field all of the flexibility they need to close their sale. Mm -hmm. So it's both. You know, you don't want to lock your salespeople in because it's not one size fits all. Every customer is different. But on a corporate side, you have to have consistent brand. You have to have consistent message. That's how you build your brand. That's how you build your company. So I, I like to use the, the visual of a teeter-totter. You know, it's, it's sales on one side, marketing on the other, and they balance. And that's ultimately what, you know, we started doing uh, in the late 90s when computers first had sight, sound, and motion. And it was a, a big database-driven hundred thousand dollar installation every time nine month lead time to put it all together you know we wrote the presentations we did the animations we put it you know from soup to nuts and then as technology changed um we transitioned to just a cloud software um business and just said hey you know let everybody use their own powerpoint their own acrobat pdf their own word docs their own infographics and we'll just post the information, but give them those same, same benefits. So I'm old enough to remember certainly my time at L'Oreal where we used to print the sales pitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The deck. We'd print the deck. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, <laughs> they'd, they'd have the little triangle, uh, what is it called? Mm -hmm. You know, Chevalier, which we, on which they'd present their pages and they'd have to follow mm -hmm. page after page and and there was no way to change anything once right. it had been printed, and right. and there was a very methodical page one, page mm -hmm. two, page three approach. Mm -hmm. You know, of mm -hmm. course, the wilier salespeople knew how to flip to page four because that's where the prices right. were were hidden and so on and so forth. Right, right, right. It feels to me what you're saying that obviously with the SaaS and the ability to share so much things, there is another zone of interest which is to understand more the the way sales is working because mm -hmm. the, the marketing person with a great intention is put presenting right. the best idea best way the the, the mm -hmm. language mm -hmm. we're supposed to be using the logos we're supposed to be using puts that out but generally speaking i mean as as you well know marketers are, are far removed from the realities of the sales as you were saying just before right right and it feels like in this digital world we could even have a, a data feedback to the marketing team saying, this is the page that that they spent the most time on. This is the page right. they constantly flipped over. Right. Are, is there is there opportunities or is that something that's being worked on? Where, where do you see on that? At, absolutely. And that's that's the end stage of the loop. It's it's reporting. It's tracking how much time they spent on a slide whether they downloaded the slide, whether they used that slide to create a new presentation. Did they email that slide to the client? Did they present it live? Um, uh, it, in shop for all of that, all of that activity is, is tracked. And, and we call it, we liken it to, um, we say presentations uh, don't die, they just evolve. So as you push out as a marketing person, pushes out the presentation content. And that could be a PowerPoint, a video, a infographic, a PDF in Excel. And then the salesperson says, okay, I have a meeting with Minter. Um, you know, he likes this topic and he likes that topic. And they go in and, and, they, and they put their slides together. They throw in a video, they throw in a PDF, they save it out. And, you know, since you're in the UK, um, I might send you a link to that and you can look at it you know, on your time. Or I could say, you know, okay, I'm going to broadcast it. We're going to have this meeting at 12 o'clock New York time on Friday. The site tracks all of that activity and all of those reports go back to marketing. So marketing knows Alex talked to Mentor on Friday <laughs> and they talked about these slides and they even texted a little bit. It's all tracked and based on that. And then marketing can say, well, John also talked about those slides. So maybe 
maybe we need more information on that topic because that seems to be a hot topic. Or um, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll give you another example. We have a, a media a company and you know they have thousands and thousands of break cards and they update them like on a monthly basis. And, and when they went to the reports, they realized our salespeople don't sell with these at all. They just don't use them. They're still successful, but they're not, they're not getting into the minutia on their sales. So they just stopped making them and stopped providing them. And yay, marketing and research just freed up half of their week every week. Crazy. And, you know, yeah. Well, how, how, yeah. In, in your, with your clients, though, mm-hmm. for me, having been, spent a lot of my life in those offices, right. coming up with really intelligent sales presentations mm-hmm. and all that, I, I certainly don't remember trying to or having the the bandwidth to learn from my mistakes mm-hmm. or to learn from how sales was doing things the, mm-hmm. is that data used in your in your mind yeah because you, like everything you're like with this outlook where we only use uh 10 percent of what an outlook can use or right the, the minimalist approach time needed to learn are, are people well, able to actually learn yeah, I think so because one, uh, you know, we're we're we've become so data centric in these past say seven years. You know, it's all about the data. Two, um, the the marketing person, or the presentation librarian, so to speak, um, the person who is vested in creating that content and has to update that content, knowing what's getting used and what's not, is going to help them make decisions going forward um so it's really it's it's worth it to look at the reports and and weed through them because otherwise you, you don't know what's going on in the field yeah and it's especially true in, in a country like the states where you presumably if you're national your sales team mm-hmm. is really split out when you have a more condensed geography where, for example, when I worked in London, in England, it was it was feasible for me to see all the salespeople mm-hmm. in one day. They'd all come, right. everyone would drive down to London or to some specific spot. Having everybody fly into one particular place in the United States, first of all, it's a lot of people. Second of all, it's a lot further. <laughs> so it, it makes complete sense there. Here's, right. here's the last question I want to talk about with regard to Shuffler before getting into a couple of other topics. Mm-hmm. What are the things that are tricky to make Shuffler happen. And let me give you an example. I am a, I'm a presenter and in my career mm-hmm. at L'Oreal, I was interested mm-hmm. in my career. And I thought right. my presentations right. were for my career. Mm-hmm. I, if someone started yanking my slides mm-hmm. and, and using them for their presentation, mm-hmm. at some level, I'd be saying, oh, I'm not so sure I want that to happen. So I was wondering right. what are the cultural things that need to be identified to allow for Shuffler to work optimally within an organization. So are you saying that back when you were at L'Oreal, you created your own presentations? Oh, yeah. Well, so yes, of course. Mm -hmm. First of all, as a marketer, I was responsible for creating the presentations of my product. And then, of course, they would be approved because I was just Mm -hmm. a a marketing manager by the marketing Mm -hmm. director and so on. Then I, you know, if I was doing a presentation to the board of something, this is something that right. I would formulate. So this, this mm-hmm. is where we need to do this. This is the strategy. This is the structure of my presentation. Right, right, right. The key arguments. And, and I've, I evolved my presentation mm-hmm. skills to mm-hmm. try to avoid having more than three points on a slide, if right. possible, less than nine words on a slide. So I had these yep. different ideas. This is back 20 years ago about how mm-hmm. to make presentation. And, and e- even if someone did take them, I would say, well, they, they don't know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So then it's sort of irrelevant. They have these, these three words on a slide, but they don't know the, the, the content right. of what's behind that right. to make those three words or an image come alive. Mm-hmm. Well, isn't, doesn't that come down to, and, and that's always, that comes down to like, it, it, I think it comes down to the, the value of the content and the return on investment, the ROI of the content. 
So let's look at it from a, a big picture, a corporate standpoint, not the mentor. This is my presentation. This is my thief, bike, bike them. But the whole company, they pay you a lot of money. You spend two weeks putting together a great presentation. You sourced, you sourced resource, research. You have marketing data in there. You have uh, customer data in there. You have branding. You have graphics. You have messaging. You put the best copy together to make that. That. How much, if you look at how much did that presentation cost? $10,000, $20,000, maybe, but all of your time to that. So that's an investment that L'Oreal just made. Uh, they spent $20,000 on that presentation. So what's the value of you giving that presentation once, one time in your meeting, and then all of that information just dies on your network or unleashing that to the rest of the company so that $20,000 presentation that cost is getting used a hundred times in a hundred different me meetings all over the world versus that one. What's the return on that content by multiplying it? Yeah, so I, I and mean, now I see... I'm going to take it one step further. You, since you wrote the presentation, that also gives more value to your work. So now everybody's using your work and they know you did it. So it actually elevates you. You are now the product expert and everybody in the company and all, all of your customers all over the world know that you are the product expert, not just those 10 people in that boardroom on that one day. Right. So I, I fully understand from a corporate standpoint, I'm thinking more like the individual's because the challenge is in so many organizations, whether it's between sales and marketing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it can also be between marketer and marketer. Right. And you know, my career over his career or her career. And, mm -hmm. and so that, because what, what I see underneath Shuffler is this massive sharing, proper mm -hmm. tagging, and all these other mm -hmm. elements that are going to make it mm -hmm. useful for everybody. Because right. having worked in, in like L'Oreal, we had mm -hmm. all these pack shots of everything and and right, advertising right, right. campaigns yep. and 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 it was an absolute and there's an f word before this fest of <laughs> of, of material uh, assets that were shared were on everybody's computer taking up huge amounts of space mm -hmm. hard to find when someone leaves lost so i think there's a real benefit to shuffler i can i can completely mm -hmm. get it I was just trying to get get in under the skin, if you will, of the cultural challenges that companies might face in onboarding a shuffler to right. you know, what needs to happen in the culture in order for shuffler to be optimized. I, I think so. I think shuffler would have to start from the, the top down or from marketing out. So to change the culture, just like anything else, you got to make it easy. So by uploading all of the presentations in there and by marketing saying, these are all the latest versions and these are all properly branded. And, and these are the best slides in the whole company. Now you as a salesperson can go into Shuffler and instead of spending a week to make your presentation, you can spend an hour by sourcing the slides so you don't have to start from scratch. So ultimately it has to be easy, but it has to make the salespeople's jobs easier. And if they can go from five hours to five minutes to create a new presentation, it's not a cultural change. It's just like, okay, that just got so much easier. And now I can go do other things. I don't have to spend a week futzing around with, you know, PowerPoint and, and all that. Well, I certainly see a large benefit for Alexandra. I um, wanted to talk the last sort of zone of, of interest mm -hmm. because you wrote about how there's not enough recycling and your eco-friendly mm -hmm. wordage uh, uh, right. with regard to marketing assets and things that we <laughs> use. Uh, and, and you wrote, uh, which was interesting for me, that uh, you say 70% of all the content mm -hmm. never gets used. Yeah. I was like, wow. That then came the second from 3M. All right, I want to get back to that. But then the second mm -hmm. one you, you said, which was 90% of it never gets reused. 
Right. And and so I was actually more shocked that the 90 wasn't closer to 100%. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's that, and that I think speaks to what you just brought up about, I just made my presentation, it's mine. I did it and it stays on, on your hard drive and nobody else sees it. So the and 90%. The other thing, and yeah, and then the other thing is the, um, what you call the F fest of files, nobody can find anything. So even if you're like, okay, I'll put this on the shared drive, nobody knows it's there. So they don't even know to look for it. Yeah, IMG 64932 JPEG. Yeah, that one. That right. one helps. I mean, <laughs> right? Or or um, acronym for meeting, the FMAP uh, 9 2016. Right. right. FMAP 2016. Oh, the field marketing applied, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's not what I was thinking. <laughs> 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 you said that. Yeah. So, um, so talk us through some of your ideas as to how to benefit from, I mean, 70% of marketing assets are, are not used. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So talk mm-hmm. us through what, what, what's behind that number. I mean, is it because like you do a photo shoot, for example, and right. at the photo shoot uh, uh, in an hour, uh, we might take uh, 200 shots. We're only going to, or, you know, right. We, when we look at where we'll go down and we'll actually pick one because that's, that's the hero shot. Okay. Right. Right. So are, are we talking the other 199 aren't used or what are, what are we talking about when we're talking about unused marketing materials? Well, I mean, they're unused primarily to your point because nobody can find them and nobody knows they're there. And when you have a name like FMAP IMG 138729, Nobody, like, I don't know what that is. Um, What we do, what part of presentation management is, and I think it's so critical, and it's, 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 to me, it sounds like such a no-brainer, is the contents visualized. So everything, every file is formatted as a slide ready to present, and it's searchable. So, so when you click on that IMG, you see the picture. When you click on slide 80 of a 300 slide deck, you see the slide, you can read it, you can see the speaker notes, you know what it's about. When you click on the video, you can just play it. It's right there, it's all visualized because if you can't see it, you can't find it. So one of our very first tenets of presentation management is all files are visual, ready to present. So you're not looking at a list of file names, you're literally looking at the pictures And then from there, ready to present means I can just email it to you with a link. I could go into broadcast mode and present it to you, or I can drag and drop it into a new presentation and and customize it a little bit for for my next meeting. It's about visualization of content. And I think it is the most important thing. And it sounds really simple. If you can't see it, you can't find it. But, you know, so many that that is, and I think that's the, that's the sticking point in Shuffler is because people can then go in and find their content. They can see it. It just, it just makes it that much easier. I want to go back to the story you talked about at the, at mm-hmm. the bar where uh, my friend is showing me through his uh, holiday shops. Yep. I, I feel it also is representative of one of the key problems, which is that we have 200 shots I was on, on my safari. I have a thousand shots. Where's right. the shot? And you're scrolling through right. and it, and mm-hmm. it's just such a mess. If I could just mm-hmm. tag all my images to be the right. searchable to find, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then Kenya, safari, lion, right? Right. right. Because yep. in my Kenya safari, which takes up about 17 pinches, right? You know, mm-hmm. all your scrolls. Right, right, right you're still scrambling to see mm-hmm. what you're looking for. And, mm-hmm. and it feels like for Google in general as well, the tagging component would really be yeah. so important to mm-hmm. go back in there and tag and, and kill the 199 mm-hmm. photographs that weren't good so that nobody else has to do that. Do that curation right. as well. I right, mean, is right, that right. you can do within Shuffler as well? Well, in Shuffler, the idea of presentation management and a presentation strategy is your marketing director does that curation for you. So somebody is saying, okay, this this is the money shot. This is the right message. This is the right logo. So when your 200 salespeople go in, they're not worried that they have the worst picture. They just know 
this is the best. This is the right one. And even if it wasn't, um, going in search is also visual. So when you do a search, your keywords show up highlighted on the slide. So it, again, it's the more you see, the, the, the faster it is. We, we are visual, you know, a picture paints a thousand words. All right. So your typical customers for Shuffler are? Mm -hmm. uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, financial companies, travel companies, media companies, consulting companies. It's um, primarily business to business sales teams. All right. Well, anyway. Companies with uh, large business to business sales teams. Alex, congratulations. Um, oh, thank you. How, how can, uh, you know, for, for people who like to uh, get, mm -hmm. get your book? or and uh, figure out more about Shuffler. Uh, give, us, uh, give us the sales page, they not the sales page, to, where, how to find <laughs> it. Go to shuffler.com, S-H-U-F-F-L-R-R.com. You can have a uh, first user's free. You can have a free site right from the homepage. You can also uh, order the book from the homepage. And uh, if you want, you can email me from the site as well. I, I would love to hear from you all. Great. Well, thanks for coming on, Alex. It's been a pleasure. And uh, yay to uh, making uh, all those servers a little less heavy with so many yep. duplicate bloody slides and images and all that. <laughs> and, and hopefully breaking down that wall between marketing and sales. That is such a pernicious and ongoing problem. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having listened to this episode of the Minter Dialogue Show. You'll find all the show notes and other blog posts on MinterDial.com. And if you enjoyed the show, please head over to Apple Podcasts to give a rating and review. And to finish, here's a song I wrote with Stephanie Singer, A Convinced Man. Man, to the test. I'm a convinced man.